I have an idea. Let us first paint a model in black and white. Go ahead, I'll wait. Now that that's done, let's colorize it. That's right. Good sequels come in pairs. Welcome to part two in the series on painting the Black Templar. So, as my intro suggested, first time around we painted a model in black and white, focusing on volume, leaving color off the chart, off the table. But now, I like to preach a strong game about enhancing the depth of shadow by adding cold tones and increasing the highlights by adding a certain degree of warmth to the upward facing areas. Um, I'm also taking advantage of this black and white gradient, laying down some contrast paint, some weathering powders, just uh, working the mid-tones, right? I have the deepest color, I have the brightest color, I have my black, I have my white, but what lies in between is still up to us. Let's have a look at this week's suspects. The colors in play will be Liquitex Titanium White, Blood Angels Red from the Contrast Paint line, Yellow Earth from the Secret Weapon Weathering Powder line, Vallejo Black, and all from P3, Bloodstone, Guncore Brown, Moldy Ochre, Meridius Blue, and then Exile Blue. Except not really because I didn't end up using Exile Blue. What I did was mix a little bit of black into Meridius Blue. The truth is in seeing with your own two eyes. So, without any further ado, let's get on to the main course. The first thing that I wanted to get to is laying down a nice fun coat of contrast paint. As we've said before, I basically have a black and white photo here, so using contrast as a filter, I can just lay this over the surface in a nice uniform coat. I'll hit the purity seals, I'll hit his eye, and I'll hit his weaponry. I may have to pull out some some highlights back up out of this layer of contrast paint, but you get the picture. And let's paint that weapon just for satisfaction's sake. And the chain sword too. Man, that is very satisfying to just lay the contrast over a fully rendered gradient. I like to preach the good word of cold shadows and warm highlights. So these reflections that we discussed in the last video that are bouncing up off of the ground, let's add a little bit of a colder tone to those. So I'll add my turquoise and my black together, touch of water, and then just along these midsections, I'll lightly glaze some turquoise down. I may not want to completely cover the, the gray, that neutral gray that's being reflected upwards, but you see just kind of adding this mid-tone in there. Along the way it hits this colder tone and gives us a nice more uh, painterly accent, adding a bit of temperature to our shadows instead of just working with dark and light. I can work with cold and warm now. Um, but I do caution you, if, if you're following along, less is more. You can always add another thin glaze. It can quickly get out of control and I want this model to still look like it's in black armor. So to just demonstrate how thin these coats are, that will give you an idea of the dilution. Okay, and there he is with a little touch of the shadow. Um, notice that I didn't add any of these cold tones to his helmet or his collar or his chest plate. Generally, the bust of the model is framed up by um, colder tones. You can see the effect here. But we're going to do the same thing, just take a subtle amount of yellow, using moldy ochre in this case. Again, very, very thin. Just the thinnest wisp of color. I'll even take my brush with all that paint removed and 
oh so gently blended into the midtones, leaving that brightest white highlight exposed and just surrounding it with a small amount of yellow. I'm using, using such a soft amount of color. It allows some of the gray to show through as well. Just kind of trace around these brightest areas. As I go, I may want to I may want to reapply some final highlights in the next step. But for now, we'll just get a small touch of yellow into those upward facings. It'll take a few coats as well. I say uh, the rule of threes. I will not see a pleasable result until I have laid down at least three layers. And oftentimes it takes many more, but at minimum three before you see a pleasable result. I also have a little touch of tan for those parchment papers, the purity seals. They'll get the same touch, just glazing a small amount, so even those those black lines will still show through. Just like so. This drop shadow area is real fun to play with. I added a small touch of our colder tone into the shadow and then right next to it I'll be placing this glaze of light yellow. Makes for a very cool color interaction. Let's also take a bit of this tan maybe add some streaks of grime to the shoulder pads just to make this surface a little more interesting and everything else is battle damaged so why stop at the shoulder we've got these bullet holes I can drag just a very thin wispy line of grime kind of running out of those and it's just some general streakage not a bad touch, and I'll do this in multiple passes, so you can see I'm kind of playing with the uh, interrupting the blend so I get kind of a cruddy result. And on the weaponry, since I laid down that coat of contrast paint, it's all dry now. I'll just pull a slight highlight in of Vallejo deck tan. Just pull those edges back out and you can see very very slight amounts there's already an edge highlight in there underneath underneath it all there's already a, a line so I'm working on top of that just to enhance the gradient and reapply some of this battle damage because I want it to look very coarse very abrupt so nice sharp highlights And now, with an old used brush in my hand and a can of powder at my side, I'll take a little dip, remove most of the powder, and then just very gently tone things up. Only on the raised areas, just kind of dry brushing. I don't want to sink too much of this into the crevices working in subtlety so just a very small amount Let's just gently kind of graze across this asphalt and maybe just a touch on his boots I'll just sweep it back and forth until a little something sticks Got the bottoms of his feet the same little treat treatment but you get the picture and there he landed in a glorious full spectrum of color 
spinning a 360 because the enemies of the Imperium are all around you. Thank you, my friends, for tuning into this video and supporting this Patreon. Please let me know your comments, concerns, your innermost thoughts and desires in the comments below. It is important to communicate because we are a legion and there's a world out there, a black and white world that we must paint. So I encourage you to raise your brush high, go out that door and get your teeth wet.